Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So in today's video, I am going to try and myth bust that old wives tale that these conkers here, conkers, repel spiders. Now there are stories saying that if a spider goes near it, it contains a certain chemical that will make them shrivel up. Some stories say it just repels them from your home. They're not going to enter it if you put them on windowsills, door ledges, fireplaces. It will keep the spiders away. And I know for a fact, especially on cleaning groups, I've seen posts like, Hey girls, pop out your conkers because it'll keep the spiders away while you're cleaning your house. And that's no offence to anybody. But I'm going to try and prove this wrong today. Do I have facts to prove it wrong? No, but I am going to conduct an experiment to try and bust this myth. But before I do that, what are my reasons for thinking that it's a complete myth, that it's a complete lie? Well, conkers come from a horse chestnut tree, right? Now the horse chestnut tree does have certain invertebrates that could cause it harm. It could have certain things that will eat the leaves of the horse chestnut tree, potentially damage the bark or the roots of the tree. But a spider will cause no harm to that tree. In fact, it's more likely to eat the other invertebrates that can cause harm to that tree. So why then would a tree create a defense mechanism against something that's going to protect it? That to me seems a little bit weird. It wouldn't, right? In evolution, something tends to create defences against its natural predators. Spiders are actually helping that tree, in my opinion. If you think I'm wrong on that, please pop a comment below and let me know why. So anyway, enough of the chatting. Let's get some experiments underway and see if it really does repel some spiders. Okay, so experiment number one. In this pot here, I have collected a giant house spider, the E. atrica female. Now this is a very large spider as you can see compared to my hands. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pop her on this table. Now I've done a little zoom in for you. Here is a conker. Okay, I'm going to place that right above her. There's no shriveling up. There is no sign of even movement. Let's put another conker this side. And another conker this side. Still no movement. Now we're going to place a bunch of conkers. All on this side of the pot. And what I'm going to be doing for you guys is I'm going to leave this camera now running for exactly 10 minutes from now and then I will time lapse it for you and we'll see if she decides to move to the other side of the container in that period of time or if she shrivels up or has any issues. Sorry guys, I left the room and I didn't realise that my lighting had powered off. So on the next experiment I'll make sure the lighting's back up. But as you can see, it's been 10 minutes now. She has stayed on the side of the pot that she was on that contained the conkers. The other side had none. She could have easily tried to escape or run to that side of the pot but chose not to. So we're going to move on to experiment number two. So experiment number two, here you see I have conkers in a pot. Now if these really do secrete something that would repel a spider, they certainly wouldn't eat a prey item that has been running around these gaining the secretion onto its body, it would certainly reject that meal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop an insect in here and this is going to be a red runner cockroach. I'm going to pop it in here, let it run around the conkers for five minutes and then we're going to take it out and see if the spider will eat it. So I'm not sure how well you can see, but it's already ran around a couple of the conkers there. It's just down in this corner. Let's make sure that it can touch a few. So it's climbing all around it, look. Definitely had 
any form of secretion on there. Plus, I've been rubbing my hands on these conkers and I used them to touch the roach. See? We're gonna leave this for five minutes. So here's the cockroach. Now it's quite possible she might run away when I open this lid. Let's see what will happen. She struck at the roach. Hasn't eaten it. Now some of you might think where she snapped and then didn't consume it. Might have been something to do with the secretion, it's possible, but it's more likely that because her abdomen's fairly plump, she isn't actually interested in eating right now. But she's not running away from the roach. So we kind of failed that experiment. Could it have been secretion from the conker? Or could it have been a not very hungry spider? I'm gonna have to try that cockroach with another spider. So I had another spider, just in case something like this would happen. I'm going to, it's the same cockroach. You can see it in the corner there. Still quite injured, so it's gonna be less wriggly now. And I'm gonna pop this. Straight away. Look at that. The struggle is real trying to demobilize the roach. He's actually he was attacking legs to stop it kicking and now he's piercing in. So in my conclusion, the spiders still have no issue with secretion of conkers. The first one may not have eaten this roach, but she certainly struck at him, something she wouldn't do if there's a, a chemical on him that she didn't want to be near. And the second one took to the roach straight away. So we're going to do a third and final experiment about these conkers and we'll go back to our bigger, scarier house spider. Final experiment. We've placed the conkers inside the tub. I'm placing our big girl inside here. In fact, it might be better if I turn it sideways. So I've tipped her out into this home here. Now she's just been taken away from her webbing so she's going to be a little bit annoyed with us at the moment. There she is. These are the kind that you can see in your house. You would normally see them slightly smaller running across your floor and that's because those ones are males in search for a girl like this. As you can see, she's got no issue being on top of that conquer. She was more stressed that she couldn't climb the plastic. There is plain walls in here, folks, as you can see. There's a patch down this side and this side she could have been using. She's using the conquer to try and get to some safety, but she didn't have to. She could have chose the spots without the conkers in. Now these spiders do like to hide, so it is gonna be a little bit frustrated at the moment that there is an, a hiding spot. ...provided for her, and she doesn't really want the light shining on her. So for now, we're going to leave her in here just for a few hours to see how she does with the conkers, make sure she's safe and sound and then we'll provide her a nice hiding spot where she can live in here happily until I set her free. I'm gonna leave you on a final time lapse just to prove that the conkers are not going to kill her. So, I'll see you in a mo. So I've left the camera on for a bit and although she's gone into this corner you can clearly see that the conkers weren't having an effect on this spider whatsoever. All she wants to do is get away from this light and climb out of this enclosure. So much so that she was even trying to use the conkers earlier to get herself out.
So, although this wasn't scientific factual proof, I am pretty comfortable in my opinion that conkers do not repel spiders. So we did experiment number one, placing conkers near a spider. It did not shrivel and die, it did not try and run away to a side where the conkers weren't. We did experiment number two, which we had to attempt twice, which was having a cockroach running around the conkers and trying to feed it to a spider. Now the first attempt, yes, she didn't take to it, but she did snap at it and didn't try and run away from it either. So if it did have a scent on it from the conkers, that spider would have ran a mile, right? But we tried it again with another spider, which had no issues attacking that cockroach, had no issues being near that cockroach. And then our third and final experiment, putting a big old girl house spider in a tub with conkers and she was trying to actually use the conkers as a way of escape by climbing them. And I'm pretty comfortable in the fact that it's all a load of hocus pocus so I'm really really sorry if I've upset anybody or made you feel unsafe in your own homes but I'm here to try and provide information on all things creepy crawly. So if you want to see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back on my channel weekly for multiple uploads. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.